Apple finally had their October event and announced the world's first three nanometer chip in a computer. The M3, the M3 Pro, and the M3 Max chips. We're getting them in the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros and the 24 inch iMac. With the predictions for this event all over the place, I can't believe how spot on I was in my last video and in my M3 video. I'm pretty proud of myself, I must say. I actually kind of liked this event. It was only 30 minutes and straight to the point. And I can appreciate content that gets straight to the point. So let's go ahead and dive in. Apple has officially said good riddance with a 13 inch MacBook Pro, which I know a lot of people are kind of happy about. I've been rocking mine for over three years and honestly, I loved the touch bar and didn't really have any issues with mine. Although I will say I have been itching for some more screen real estate. The 13 inch is kind of small, especially when you start getting into video editing and all that stuff. So the 14 and 16 inch is very appealing. So now you can choose between the 14 and 16 inch. And we also get the option to choose from any of the Mac 3 chips for the MacBook Pro lineup, which means that we have a base M3 chip in a MacBook Pro. The base M3 chip only comes in the 14 inch with the same eight core CPU and 10 core GPU with up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory. It's up to 60% faster than the M1 and 40% faster than the M2. Now this will only have one versus two internal fans that you get in the Pro and Pro Max, but should still run just fine. The base M3 MacBook Pro model starts at $15.99, which is a great value for those that are needing to upgrade and are on a budget. Now I feel like they mainly focused on speed for the whole M3 launch, which is great, especially for those coming from an Intel chip or an M1. But I did notice that they left the M2 stats out of sight, out of mind, as they're isn't as huge of a difference from the M2. Now the MacBook Pro with the M3 Pro chip comes in the 14 and 16 inch with a 12 core CPU and 18 core GPU. It's 40% faster than the M1 Pro and 20% faster than the M2. The 14 inch with the M3 Pro starts out at $19.99 and the 16 inch starts out at $24.99. And we did get a brand new color, which is the Space Black. And it's only available with the Pro and Max chip. And the coating on this is pretty much said to be fingerprint free, so we will see about this. Now the MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip also comes in the 14 and 16 inch options. It has a 16 core CPU and 40 core GPU. Another exciting announcement is that the Max now supports up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory. It's up to two and a half times faster than the 16 inch M1 Max and two times faster than the 16 inch M2 Max. This was first introduced on the Mac Studio M1 Ultra and is now available on the laptops, which is freaking awesome. They also say that editing with DaVinci, Final Cut Pro, and Premiere Pro is seamless thanks to its two ProRes engines. So I will definitely be testing that out. I may or may not have bought the Macs in the black. I'm really excited. That wasn't the plan but I can't wait. So I'll definitely be reviewing that when it comes in. All the MacBook Pro models deliver consistent performance regardless of whether it's connected to a power source or solely running on battery power, which apparently is not the case for most PC laptops. They also offer an impressive battery life up to 22 hours. Apple also announced that the new 24 inch iMac is now running on the M3 chip. So as we suspected, it will be skipping over the M2 chip and we'll be rocking the M3 inside it. There's no change to the design and we get the same seven colors that we had before. So this updated 24 inch is gonna be two times faster than the last iMac 24 inch with the M1. It's gonna be two and a half times faster than the 27 inch and four times faster than the 21 and a half inch iMac. It's got 500 nits of brightness and the iMac is gonna start at 1299. So a couple things they announced is only the exact amount of memory that is needed is used for each task. This allows more tasks to utilize the GPU at a given time, which significantly increases the performance for demanding apps and games. The entire M3 lineup now has ray tracing for the first time, which models the physical properties of light as it interacts with a scene, enabling games to render more accurate shadows and reflections to create more realistic environments. We get game mode, which prioritizes graphics tasks to deliver consistently high frame rates and and drastically reduce latency with your wireless accessories. The CPU is able to deliver 
deliver the same performance as the M1 with half the power and pretty much the same for the GPU. The media engine supports hardware accelerated decoding for AV1 video streams, enabling power efficient playback of streaming videos for YouTube, Netflix, and other services. If you kept watching the event after it ended, you would have noticed a note from Apple that said the event was shot with an iPhone and edited on a Mac, which they ended up showing us how it was filmed using the iPhone 15 Pro Mac with the professional equipment and lighting, of course, but it's pretty cool. So they were obviously trying to market the iPhone in this event as well. Anywho, thanks for watching. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one.